Hello, greetings and salutations, this is Al from Open Source Channel, welcome, new episode. As usual, don't forget to like, subscribe, click on the bell icon so you get notified anytime I make a new video. Today I'm going to show you how I install Onbox on Docker. I use Onbox to have and organize all my information, everything I have within my infrastructure. Of course, you can use Homebox for many different reasons, but this is the reason why I use Homebox. It's very simple to use and it's also very simple to install. All the information in the description below. So without any delay, let's go and let's start. Here is the quick start. You can have two ways to install it with a Docker Run or Docker Compose. I'm going to use Docker Compose and I'm also going to use, for simplicity, Portainer. But again, you can do in many different ways, all right? Now here you also find some variables, configuration you can use. For example, just to make it easy for you to understand, on this one here where it says 10, it means 10 megabytes. If I go down, as you can see here, uh, HBox web max upload size. So the maximum upload size, it will be 10 megabytes for a file. If you want to change that one, you're more than welcome to change it to whatever your needs are, all right? 10 is enough for this kind of stuff, but again, you can change it. We got two ports. This is the actual port of the container, and this is the outside. This is what you need to change if, for example, you have already a container using the same port. Now, I don't want to go too much in details. I don't want to stress you out. As usual, this channel is to make it simple as possible. So all I done already here, copy the actual file, or you can actually click here and copy to the clipboard. I'm going to portainer local. I can add a new container or I'm going to choose stack. I just could say add stack. So I can actually add my own stack here and I'm going to call it home box. Then I'm going to paste the clipboard. I'm going to leave it everything as it is. Again, guys, you want to change that to 100 is up to you. Info and text. Again, all the information are here. You can actually change to whatever is you need for the log level. I got info that is the default. So you can have trace, debug, warn, info, arrow, and critical. And the log format, I am choosing text. Or you also can choose JSON. That is up to you. All right. Again, you can actually add mailer host if you wanted to. In this case, for me, I don't need that. It's something I'm running locally. Uh, again, to make it even easier, you could do a Docker run if you are not using it for, uh, if you're using it for testing rather for, you know, to make it a live deployment. That is up to you, okay? So for simplicity, I'm using Docker Compose for me. Only make it make it easy for you as well so you can actually follow along. So I'm not going to change the rest of the volumes. I'm happy the way it is, local. Uh, that is the container on box. And this is the actual image and we are installing the latest. So once I am happy with this, uh, I'm going to say deploy stack. And that automatically will also save the stack. That shouldn't really take that long. It's a quite small file. And as you can see, the stack has been deployed successfully. Now let's go back to the dashboard. Again, to the new version, I minimize here, but this is the actual menu. I'm running the latest version of a portainer. Those are the containers. And as you can see, the own box is up and running. Okay, you can actually view the, you can actually spec to see what's going on. Go back here, the log. And as you can see, the port has been started. So it looks everything ready to go. So let's go back to the containers. I usually click on this one here. Again, guys, when I went over here and I said the port, this is the actual port over the container. But to be to be seen on your browser, it will be port 3100. So I'm going to click on that. And I should be able to, as you can see, is ready and should be ready to be logged in. All right, so as you can see, you're ready to go. Of course, we don't have a default login. We need to register 
a new user and this is the way it goes you register and then you log in so i'm going to make up a new registration logins all right so i'm going to press register and now i should be able to log in with this credential and as you can see i'm ready to go now i already got some uh, storage locations as i said guys it's very little very small application and it's really ready to go you can change all this information if you needed to just go and edit to attic to for example as i use this you can actually put description parents whatever if they are parents for each room here we go let's go back to items sorry home and as you can see somewhere server room we got the office we got the garage again here you can actually add anything you really need for that particular room i'm going to create a new uh for example asset i'm gonna, gonna say it is in the server room i'm gonna say it's a switch there and i'm going to go to you know description and i can actually add any kind of uh, uh, tags i want uh, again you can choose as many as you want you can create a new tags or labels whatever you know it's up to you and then you press create and this is what happens and you got all the information again for that tp switch you can add information about what you uh purchase the warranty details if you sold it if you bought it somewhere whatever all the information you can add the serial number the model number the manufacturer that's up to you how you want to uh organize your items right that is all up to you but again we go back to home and this is how really simple it is to get started as you can see here we already got some labels here you can actually import a cv file you can change the profile of the user in this case it would be me you can change the group settings uh for example for me it would be for the currency pounds and i can actually update again don't forget and you can actually change the name settings if you like it dark uh, let's go night here now i'm not sure if you need to update but again let's update again just in case go back to home and as you can see also the theme has been changed we got one item in the server room and again you can actually add whatever you need you can use it for your own personal for your house to see where the stuff are or you can use it professionally like i do for itemizing all the uh the infrastructure all the uh, hardware that i own in my system all right so guys thank you so much indeed for following for this tutorial i hope you enjoyed it and i'll see you next time